Welcome to Degay's Watch Degrassi. I'm David. And I'm Marisa. This is the Degrassi Rewatch Podcast, where each week, my expertise and my skepticism will reveal new tidbits, make connections, and shed a new rainbow on this Canadian after school special. Today we are reading. Reading. Today we are. <laughs> Shut up. Today we are watching season one, episode seven, Basketball Diaries. This is based on a 1978 book that is a memoir, and it was later made into a movie in 1995 with Leo DiCaprio. So I'll go straight into our synopsis. Jimmy wants to make the basketball team, but needs to catch up in English at the same time. How will he beat out his rival, Sean? Ashley is butting heads with a rival of her own, Liberty. But Ashley and Jimmy both get more than they bargained for from the grade sevens. That's what happens in this episode. And without further ado, let's get started. We learn that Jimmy and Sean are both trying out for the basketball team along with a bunch of other boys. And that they're soon going to have an exhibition match against Earl Grey. This is one of Degrassi's <laughs> many... Tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the only tea-related rival that they have. Ah. Uh, <laughs> the be... mint medleys. <laughs> the chai spices. Uh, I guess we... I don't know if... I wonder if that's a real thing, you know? like What, a real school? No. Yeah. Obviously not. Who would name school that? Uh, oh, we're the tea bags. Like, that's just asking. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. But I guess you're right. That's asking for it. It's middle school boys. So we learned that there's 15 players currently, and there's only 12 spots left, and that Coach Armstrong is going to make cuts after the exhibition match. The coach? Oh, you mean the team size? I thought you meant cuts to the budget. <laughs> Definitely doesn't sound like his. No, although he is also the math teacher. So, Coach Armstrong... So he knows Mr. how to cut. He's like, minus three. <laughs> I'm going to teach you guys that next week. He is one of the recurring teachers. And he's actually one of the longest. He is all the way... He stays on the show all the way to the end, I think, along with Minster Simpson. But So there you go. They are one of the longest recurring characters. Jimmy is really concerned about making the team. He Spinner isn't trying out for the team for some reason, um, but he's letting him know, hey, you did really good, and he wants to do better than good. He's stressed out about making the team. Is he going to make it through? If he holds it out, if he does. I mean, in the start, he's doing those shots, so. I know, he try. does continue to be a basketball star. You know, that would, what does that mean? That's a good observation, David. That was not. But one of the deleted scenes is later on when Sean and Jimmy are together. And Sean tells Jimmy that it's just a stupid junior high ball game. And it's not a big deal. It makes Jimmy even more jealous because he wants it really bad and Sean just doesn't care that much. So now after the credits, we're finding out Jimmy's other problem. Mrs. Kwan is telling him that he's falling seriously behind. In what? In English. Oh. They have moved on from Romeo and Juliet and they're now reading Lord of the Flies. He's this wearing is... his necklace. Aw, he is wearing his necklace that Ashley gave him. Good eye, sweetie. So, who was right about it being one necklace? Hmm. Feel free to rewind. So, the B-plot coming up next. Liberty writes the scripts for Ashley to read on air in the little Degrassi TV morning sketch that she does. Ashley is annoyed, but you can tell that Liberty's really proud of what she wrote and stuff and that's she feels maybe a little underappreciated and this is them having their rivalry they always butt heads they have since their very first meeting they don't have tvs in every room they still have to push them around on those stupid cart things 
Yeah, that was definitely... When do you remember that not being a thing? Well, I mean, it was always a thing, but, like, there was at least, like, a TV in the room by, like, I don't know. I guess that's what I remember, too. I don't know. I remember both. I don't know what I remember. Like, the cart thing was for, like, that projector thing where the teacher writes on it. Oh, yeah, the overhead projector. Did you have any teachers that could write backward? Because you it, like, projects it opposite. I guess they could. Yeah, and one of my teachers could, like, write backward, and it was pretty cool. And then I'm like, ooh, I'm going to try to do that. And it's not hard once you, like, train your brain to do it, you know? And then, but there's a couple that are hard, like S and stuff. Or for me, S is, like, I'll do it backwards sometimes. Did you have a little morning announcement show or anything like that? Ever? Well, we had, yeah. Well, in high school we did. There was the morning news or whatever. Or was it like every week? I forget. It was so long ago. We used to have homeroom on Wednesdays, but not every Wednesday. It was on a weird schedule. And then that was when you got to see the news thing. And I remember... At the girls' school, there's a couple teachers that would show it, but we usually didn't get to see it because it was just pretty sprayer school, but it was really funny. There was one time someone on a live recording, it was like before Halloween, and one of the hosts like, what are you going to wear? And the other host like, oh, maybe some assless chaps. <laughs> and then like, it the the cut was hilarious like it was the most weird cut <laughs> and it just like it was nothing for like good 10 seconds and then came back and it was just the host without the guy <laughs> he never did the news again <laughs> Oh, man. That's hilarious. Also, all chaps are assless. Yeah, That's you don't need to chaps. specify. Yeah. Chaps with ass or pants. Chapless ass. That just sounds nice like Nice and moisturized. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not think of chapped asses. So, oh, I guess I should tell about mine. Um, I think you- it... Chat. <laughs> no, my school news thing. <laughs> I didn't, I don't have any funny stories, but ours was just kind of dry, and there was always a prayer, <laughs> and then they said basic stuff. Was it a teacher or a student? It was the people who were like school pr- president and stuff. So it was students, yeah, and then so. At my school, that was K through 8, it was kind of, you had one president, one, there was just one set of student body for the whole school. And then there was also, like, religious representative, and they're the person that did the prayer. So it's like, you get to be on TV, but you're reading the prayer. (laughs) And then, yeah, yours sounds funnier. So we then go to the kids in class and so Liberty is talking about how she does her job and that Ashley doesn't appreciate her and she doesn't give her a chance to read. Sean says you should just quit. I wouldn't want to be at school any longer than I have to be and Toby says well what about basketball and he said oh my social worker told me I should do that. So this is our first introduction that he has a social worker. Well, yeah, he has a social worker. We know he lives with his brother and not his parents, and that he left his parents to live with his brother. We don't know why, though. And we also learn, so from this, that he actually doesn't really care about playing basketball. He's just doing it because his social worker told him to, essentially. So, Lord of the Flies is a survival, ruthless... Um, sort of backdrop story to what Jimmy is going through. He essentially gets called out 
in class because he hasn't been reading and Mrs. Kwan figures that out. Because he can't look it up on the internet? It's kind of before that, I guess. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Forget the intro where the kid's emailing. Yeah. You're right, this is before the internet. And the whole, like, computer lab and the media immersion thing. And he's You're meant right. to be rich, so he should really, you know. Right? He could have bought the Sparks Notebook. Remember when those were a thing? Oh, I love chocolate. Okay. So, this is setting up Jimmy's dilemma. He needs to do good at English, or he'll be cut. But he can't take away time from playing basketball, or he won't do well. And then he'll get cut. And Is that how sports work? I mean, I don't know about basketball. But it's like... Is you it... didn't have to, like, keep above, like, a 2.5 or something, or, like, a certain grade? Well, yeah, but at the same time, it's not like putting in... 30 extra minutes of practice is really gonna, you know. Yeah, he just needs to manage his time better. <laughs> All right, this is our first example of stuff that Spinner says. A new, this is a new bit, y'all. So, Spinner has a tendency from this episode on, he says common phrases or anecdotes. But he doesn't say them right. He says it almost right. In this instance, Jimmy's saying, I can't get anything right. It's like, either way, I'm going to lose. And Spinner says, that's right, it's a catch-42. Obviously meaning catch-22. Uh, this is one of my favorite things about Spinner. And it continues throughout his whole career on Degrassi. Jimmy points it out to him that he's wrong. It's pretty funny. And then Spinner says, you thought you were Lord of the Flies. Get over yourself. This is also an introduction to the fact that Spinner is on Ritalin for his AD. And it's been upped recently, so I guess he takes a lot of it. Back to the B-plot. Liberty tries to ask Ashley if she can have a chance reading on the morning announcements. And Ashley says no. Ashley's just rude. We all know I don't like Ashley. She's just got an attitude problem and it annoys me. <laughs> they're practicing and Jimmy is reading while they're in practice. I felt like this scene was like kind of an unrealistic scene. Super stupid. Like who would be like, oh my god, I'm so busy that I'm reading in the middle of like practicing. And then he's not paying attention to the point that he does a layup instead of doing a three-pointer he also says later like layups are way more important than three-pointers and it's like that is not correct <laughs> oh not nowadays Steph Curry Liberty asks again Ashley says no again and Liberty starts to play hardball oh, she looks like a poodle that's what her hair looks like like you know those dogs where they have the so She's Liberty like a poodle now <laughs> see poodle Anyway. Ashley? Like yeah, like a shih tzu. So, Liberty gets mad and threatens to strike and says that a monkey could do Ashley's job. And then Ashley gets mad and says, okay, fine, you can do it. Because she knows that Liberty clearly isn't understanding how hard it is. <laughs> So, that's kind of accurate. Jimmy congratulates Sean. It's one of the few times he's actually genuinely nice to him. They have Spinner being, like, the equipment manager or something to explain why he's there all the time. I don't understand why they didn't just make him on the basketball team. Spinner takes another pill. It's the second one he takes. And Jimmy says, I wish there could be a pill to boost me up. And Spinner says, yeah, that's what would actually happen to you if Ritalin, if you took Ritalin. So he's explaining how Ritalin works. So it's the next day and Jimmy comes into class and tells Quan Ralph. That's the character I most relate to. So he's kind of correcting his previous mistake. 
Ralph in Lord of the Flies is athletic and charismatic. He's the leader in the beginning, but then later everyone turns on him. So that's a little bit of symbolism or foreshadowing. For when he gets shot? <laughs> no, not that. Of like what happens in this episode is what I meant. So not a fashion crime ticket, but Spinner's wearing this hoodie. It's like a khaki color has like a sunish sort of logo you will see him wear this continuously and it actually enters into a plot point in a season or two but not yet jimmy is explaining that he's super wiped from studying all night and he asks spinner if he'll give him one of his pills this is the whatever it takes moment jimmy's gonna do whatever it takes to get this edge at basketball because he wants to make the team so bad the track plays a really funny like hey 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 oh whoa, whoa. it's like sort of explaining that what they're doing is a bad idea but we don't get to find out how bad of an idea until later so we have a canada speak alert he asked to go to the washroom so that he can take his pill Almost gets caught by Radich. He has the pill in his hand as Radich walks by. But, as we've stated before, Radich is kind of like a see-what-he-wants-to-see sort of person. He thinks that Jimmy's the star-athlete good kid and just is so oblivious to the fact that he's about to essentially do drugs. Now, Liberty ends up doing the announcements and she does a really bad job it's really sad including like squishing her face around when she doesn't realize that they're already live and it's so bad to the point that Paige actually congratulates Ashley on setting her up and you can tell that Ashley is feeling a little bit regretful because if Paige is complimenting you on a mean girl move then you know You've probably gone too far. Also, fashion crime ticket alert. Paige has crimped hair. It's sort of going back into style now, but it was only in style for a little while in the early 00s. Lizzie McGuire sort of look. So finally, we are coming up on the basketball game. The big game we've been anticipating is about to start. We can already tell that... Jimmy is feeling the effects of the drugs he took. He says a thing about the breakfast that he ate. So he says, toast, cheese, eggs, bacon, solid protein, man, brain food, brain food. Why does he need brain food for basketball? Well, use your brain to use your body. <laughs> I guess. You can also tell that there's something wrong with Spinner. Isn't there always something wrong with Spinner? Yeah, I guess so. But his behavior is meant to be exaggerated because he's not on his medication. Uh, also, they have a really small audience. Well, it's middle school, but yeah, not very many people there. Liberty is embarrassed because people are making fun of her because of her performance. <laughs> Jimmy is doing well in the game, but you can tell that he is not passing to Sean and sort of continuing that rivalry he has with him. Hmm. Oh, another stuff that Spinner says, he says, I'm giving Jimmy some mortal support. He means moral support. They always give him these funny little mistake things. Okay, it's halftime. Spinner says, oh, I'm going to give him some entertainment. He's playing one of these songs that returns continuously throughout the series. Shake that groove thing. In fact, it comes up in like further in this season. Ashley is feeling regretful for, like, walking Liberty into that situation. She comes and finds her and tells her she doesn't, she didn't do that bad. 
And she'll give her some pointers on how she can do better. I was never in a position of power to, like, embarrass someone on purpose. And even if I was, I wouldn't. Oh, you're not a dick. <laughs> well, we all know how I feel about Ashley. She's, like, you know, a mean girl disguised as not a mean girl. But that plays out in the rest of the season. Now, in one of the iconic moments in Degrassi... Spinner. Your shirt's so baggy. It's so baggy. It's still that 90s OO style where people wore super baggy shirts paired with baggy cargo pants that had 5 million pockets, which made them look even bulkier. It was a bulky era. Ooh, product placement behind Radish. There's Gatorade bottles. And Spinner moons the crowd. <laughs> Very middle school move. Is that technically sexual harassment nowadays or something? Um, I guess so. Is streaking also then, I guess? Like, if you streak across a field, are you harassing everyone who sees you? <laughs> Basically. I guess so. Uh, someone streaked at my high school once. We went to the same high school. I think it was before you were there. Narrator, it wasn't. Were you there when that no, happened? Oh, okay. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> All right. So Radich is pissed at Spinner, and Spinner tries to get out of his punishment by telling him that it's because he missed one of his pills. But that just makes Radich even more mad, and his punishment is having to, to take, take his... more meds. <laughs> Well, he has to take his pills in front of his secretary now. So that is his punishment. And that is kind of half of this is what happens when you, in this case, don't take drugs you're supposed to take. That's the first half of the results of this teaching moment in this episode. The second half is coming up because we're still seeing Jimmy playing the game. And seeing him ball hog, and you actually... Well, he takes the ball from Sean. He, he like, fouls his own teammate to steal the ball from him. It's, like, super uncalled for. He does make the shot, though. He does make the shot. They end up winning as a result. But it wasn't the move you want to see in a player, you know... Especially at this level, they're in middle school. It's all about learning how to play with the team. And Jimmy is just, he's cocky. We know that about him. Liberty gets a chance to redeem herself. Does the second half of the special coverage with Ashley's coaching. And her friends all see her do it. And they're like, wow, she did good. One of them says, Liberty said but. <laughs> It's also weird that they're like doing the news thing like hey we won okay back to class everyone it is a little bit of odd timing like why is there a baseball game i don't know is it in the middle of class what is happening the <clears throat> schedule's a little off there also another fashion crime ticket ashley's wearing a very 90s necklace it looks kind of like one of those bungee sort of style necklaces that are back in now i love them i think i have like four so unfortunately here comes jimmy's end of the results of the teaching moment armstrong tells him he showboated and ball hogged and he didn't act like a team player he almost broke sean's ankle and he cuts Jimmy from the team. Literally, Jimmy did all of this, took the drugs, trying to stay on the team, but he ends in disaster. So that's what happens in this case when you take drugs that you shouldn't. Jimmy looks over at Sean getting iced, and he's like, oh, damn, I did actually hurt him. I think he does feel a little bit bad. The direction for all the other actors. So just walk around high fiving each other. <laughs> Don't even care though, that Sean's hurt. Or like even that it just looks weird. You never just walked around high fiving while the coach, you know, cut players? Nope. 
Like, hey, high five. I'm the gay dad. And that is the end of Basketball Diaries. Just like that. There's no real thing that redeems Jimmy and Spinner. The teaching moment that don't do drugs slash don't share your drugs ends in disaster for both of them. I guess you could construe the make it through moment as Ashley helping Liberty and Liberty getting to kind of have a redeeming moment. I guess that's the make it through moment of the episode. (laughs) Thanks, David. I agree. (laughs) And that is it for Basketball Diaries. Thank you for listening. Up next, we're listening to Season 1, Episode 8, Secrets and Lies. I'm extremely excited for this next episode because it is the first episode where we get to be gay. Gay. Woo! So, ready for the gay drama next time with Degrassi.